the European Jew gets a windfall. A massive amount of wealth now comes his way. How? The hadith was that the earth would yield up its treasures to Dajjal. A child was playing, a black child, was playing in a village in South Africa. And this child, in the middle of the 19th century, found a big stone, glittering stone. Child took it home, showed it to the parents. Parents took it to the chief of the tribe. Chief of the tribe took it to the white commissioner. White commissioner sent it to Cape Town or Johannesburg, one of these places, to have it examined. And promptly came the reply that this was a huge diamond. You think that happened by accident? You're living in Disneyland. No. The stage was now set when that diamond was discovered. Because now we know where the diamonds are located. By this time, Britain, the scientific and technological revolution has given to Britain, in particular, and Europe in general, the technology to be able to locate underneath the, oat, the earth, in the interior of the earth, the diamond veins. And the technology we wish to mine for it down in the depths of the earth, technology which never existed before. And so now the southern African region becomes a cluster of diamond and gold mines. One mine in particular becomes the most famous one of all. Three months ago, I stood myself at that mine. It was the biggest man-made hole in the world in a town called Kimberley. You heard about Kimberley diamonds. Yeah. When the diamonds were discovered at Kimberley and in the surrounding areas, it was the biggest discovery of diamonds in history. And I would suggest to you who are young and who have a thirst for knowledge, go study this part of history because tonight we have limited time. What the Jews did using an Englishman who was not a Jew, Cecil John Rhodes. Mm -hmm. Using him as a front man, they always use a front man. But they stood behind him. And they were able to manipulate the situation and gain control of the diamonds. The De Beers, De Beers Consolidated Diamond Company emerged and taking control of the diamonds. And the Rothschild family in Europe finances now the mining operations. And the bulk of the wealth which now emerges out of South Africa land up in the hands of the Jews. In 1914, the Kimberley mine was closed down because it had yielded all that it could yield. The rest that now remained was just chicken feed. Uh -huh. So they closed it down in 1914. When I went to that diamond mine in Kimberley, there were wheelbarrows filled with plastic cubes to show you, give you an estimate of how many diamonds were, came out of this diamond mine. There were five huge barrows filled, brim, heaping with these plastic cubes. That's how many diamonds they got. And these were sold in the market, the international market, at the premium price because they cornered the market through the consolidated De Beers to establish a monopoly to ensure that the price would not 
come down. The Prophet ﷺ cursed that. When Kimberley was closed down in 1914, the European Jew now had amassed the maximum wealth he could amass at that period of time. This is just about 17 years after the Zionist movement was established. Within these 17 years, Dajjal had struck and had delivered to the European Jew this massive windfall of wealth. And so now they are ready in 1914 to move to the next stage. The philosophical and political systems were already in place and now the military attack. <coughs> to destroy the Khilafah you'll have to destroy the Ottoman Empire. And you cannot destroy the Ottoman Empire with 5,000 Jews in an army. You need a world war <laughs> to destroy the Ottoman Empire. That's a tall order. So what you do is you plan a conspiracy. And you stay behind so that your fingerprints are not on the crime. In other words, you plan a September the 11th. Huh? The attack play took place in the summer of 1914 when the Grand Duke Franz Ferdinand was assassinated in Sarajevo. In the summer of 1914 there were six major powers in Europe and there was one dark horse across the Atlantic. No one knew how fast it could run because it never run in a race so far. One dark horse across the Atlantic and six major powers in Europe. They were number one Russia, France, Britain, Germany, Austria, Hungary, that's five. What's number six? Turkey. Ottoman Islamic Empire. Ain't no Turkey as yet. Ottoman Islamic Empire. These are the six major powers. How can you bring about a world war which would result in the dismantling of the Ottoman Islamic Empire? You've got, a good, you've got to do some good planning to do this one. When they attacked and assassinated the Grand Duke Franz Ferdinand, they left footprints which led to Russia. As on September 11, they, led, they left footprints which led to Al-Qaeda and and, and, and Saudi Arabia. Huh? The reason why, I forgot to mention this last night, the reason why they put so many Saudis on board the aeroplanes. You remember I told you about the Saudi who went to his government, he says, listen, I've heard in the newspapers and uh, on CNN that I'm dead. <laughs> I, I seems to me as though I'm alive. <laughs> What they had done was to hijack his identity and put it on board the plane. I forgot to mention to you last night why they had put so many Saudis. The reason for this is to attack the client relationship, the friendly relations between the United States and the government of Saudi Arabia. If you can replace this with a new relationship of mistrust, and hatred and enmity it will now it will now facilitate the Jews when they launch the big war to take control of the Saudi oil which is about to happen hmm? this is why they put so many Saudis on board the aeroplanes good they left footprints which led to Russia and so Austria Hungary had no option but to declare war on Russia but Britain and France already had a treaty a defense treaty with Russia. The Secretary of State, the Foreign Minister in Britain, was a Jew. <laughs> and so Britain and France now had to declare war in favor of Russia against Austria-Hungary. But Germany has the same racial ties with Austria-Hungary, so Germany is now forced to enter the war on the side of Austria-Hungary. So they have succeeded. Whoever planned that assassination has succeeded in bringing all these powers now in Europe into a state of war. All that is left now is what they call the sick man of Europe. Who is that? Ottoman, Ottoman Islamic Empire. 
the Khalifa in Istanbul does not want to enter the war. He knows how weak the Ottoman army is in terms of military technology.